Very good, very good. So, um, can I start with the, the basics first? Yes. I want to thank everyone in the room and I want to thank everyone who came here today to see the cinema therapy. I chose your greatest movie I've seen so far. All of your movies are excellent, you know that. Mm -hmm. But I love Cold War for uh, very specific reasons, which I'm going to analyze on this, uh, the, the next 16 minutes. Excellent. So uh, I would like to welcome everyone uh, to the first open discussion on cinema therapy that will take place live today from drama is uh, an introduction to the basic principles and techniques we use in cinema therapy in order to create a more active view in the screening of films, of course, by the viewers and, of course, the creators. Our main goal today is to introduce you to the therapeutic space and land of cinema, which is very important to me. So what is projected on the screen finds within, our, within us a ground to enhance and recognition and expression of feelings and emotions, which is the basic reason why I do what I do in cinema therapy. So welcome, Pavel. This is the first live cinema therapy in Greece with you and me I'm on honored. air. Hi, very honored. So uh, I will ask to uh, say a few things about cinema therapy and how does it works. So uh, we basically call it cinema therapy, but you also can found it in the or pronounced art movie therapy or video therapy is a form of expressive therapy, of course, like art, music, dance for medical and mental health issues. So it is also used as a form of self-help. You can, uh, you can look at the self-help books like 30 or 40 years ago. Cinema therapy was created by Dr. Gary Solomon, the first to write on using movies as therapy. Angela Taylor, a director, wrote the Cinema Therapy Manifesto that starts with one simple principle. In order for cinema therapy truly exist, the filmmaker must have an internal search question or problem to solve inside himself, but the relatives with the rest of humanity and the specific community. So what we're gonna do here is play the first clip I chose within six totally. And I want you to have a, a concept, maybe a thought mm -hmm. on that. So mm -hmm. let's see clip number one. Mm -hmm. Co ci pyta? A takie tam. Co robiłeś podczas wojny? Czy słuchasz wolnej? Czy masz dolary? Czy wierzysz w Boga? A wierzysz? Ja tak. Wiedziałam, że tak będzie kurwa dziewka. No a co byś zrobił na moim miejscu? Mam dwa lata w zawiasach. Inaczej by mnie nie przyjęli. Wiktor! A dobra, pies się jebał, burbuju. Bez łaski, ogród saski. Jakbym chciała, to bym cię kurwa załatwiła na amen. Sierce, ciebie nie chodzi za pokoje. Sierce. Как хорошо на свете жить. Сердце, как хорошо, что ты такое. Спасибо, сердце, что ты умеешь так любить. <laughs> I like that. So, you like that. Mm -hmm. I really need a comment on that clip, and then I will explain exactly the reason why I choose that. Mm -hmm. Well, comment, I mean, I mean, there's many, many ways of looking at it, but it was a, like, a, you know, one of the little turning points in the film where um, this couple who don't really, who just kind of feeling each other out, they've just fallen in love and, and they're getting familiar with each other and comfortable. And because the world they're in is not comfortable and she has to, snitch inform on him behind his back she's trying to kind of be honest and tell him about it and it kind of backfires horribly mm -hmm. so uh, uh so it's um 
So you see the kind of you know, the game they're playing and then um, she's kind of, you know, the, the close up you started with, although the scene starts earlier when she's kind of, when he's lying down and, and they're both just looking into the sky. Uh, but she is like, she's a very quick thinker, you know, so she's, she's, she's thinking on her feet and, you know, could I told him that thing about informing, now he's reacted a little bit badly. So she's trying to <laughs> change the subject a bit to, you know, ah, don't worry, you know, I just, I tell them about stuff that's not important. And by the way, do you believe in God? You know, trying to kind of deflect the whole, the whole exactly. issue. Whereas all he hears is, she is spying on me. She's spying on me. Somebody I was uh, totally unguarded with and, and honest and opened myself up in a world where it's dangerous to open yourself up. Uh, she, she is betraying me. So, uh, so then, you know, he kind of walks off, understandably upset and scared too, I suppose. And then, and then she, in, in keeping with her character, she kind of ups the stakes and says, oh, to hell with it all. I'm going to just jump off and, and to hell with you and see what happens. And she always puts everything on a knife's edge, you know, and, and usually he comes, he comes back and, and, uh, and he just, you know, it's about, co you know, complicated characters in a complicated situation. And it establishes a certain mechanism between them. Um, so they're they're so know. mismatched to each other, are they? Sorry? They're so mismatched to each other. They're that, mismatched the in, in many about. ways. And you could see that the way she speaks, especially in Polish, the dialogue is a little bit clearer. She speaks in a very kind of base. I mean, she's very intelligent, but she's not educated, you know. So she speaks in a very kind of awkward and um, charming, but kind of um, uneducated way. Um, and she tries to like, kind of you know be a bit more intellectual than she is. And um, yeah, and he's a man of not many words. He just kind of listens, you know. He's learned to keep his guard, you know. He lives in a very he's hostile the same environment. Way all the way to the end. He's exactly the same way all the way to the end. Hard, yeah, and usually he kind of, I mean, the mechanism that kind of establishes itself between them is that he always reacts a little too late. <laughs> uh, and- uh, He does after it's, all. It's what they call, but he does, yeah. I mean, but it's always, what the French used to call, or still maybe call esprit de l'escalier, you know? So things occur oh, to you- Is that after Polish? We use that in Polish, I mean, wow. you know, not many people use it in Polish, but some people use it. that word describes exactly the way he is, the way Victor is. Well, esprit de l'escalier is from French. It means the spirit of the staircase, you know, like you are in a situation and somebody like uh, insulted you or cracked a joke and you leave. And when you're already in the staircase, you suddenly have a, a reaction that's too late. And you said, I should have done that. I should have done this, but it's too late because the door's closed and you're already in the staircase and not in the apartment. So, I mean, it's, it's a long way of explaining uh, something. I'm not sure it's, it's that widely known, the concept. Oh, uh, it, it works very well for us, believe me. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much for your comment. Let's see clip number two. Oh, what do we have here? Uh, well, the, the situation, uh, the context is um, we're in East Berlin where Zula and Victor were supposed to escape to the West together. And she has obviously changed her mind. So Victor is already waiting at a certain place when they arrange to meet in order to cross to the West. And she hasn't done it. And now she's kind of standing there and thinking, what have I done? 
and thinking I probably did the right thing, but I'm so sad. <laughs> um, and then this guy turns up because she looks lonely and uh, forlorn and he's trying to kind of be friendly, possibly pick her up. And she just goes along with the flow. I mean, she doesn't really know what her body is doing anyway. She's still just kind of, she just lets him guide her and then she, even though, uh, even though I, I noticed when I was watching the movie that Victor desires more freedom for his music, right? Mm -hmm. And Zula is very loyal to her motherland, Poland, uh, in the East. So this conflict between them, they're so passionate about each other. They're almost crazy about each other, but they cannot no. live without one another. No, and the thing is that she's not crazy about her fatherland. But I don't she think that's really true. Go she with is more, she, you know, she comes from, she belongs to a social class and to, uh, of people who actually did benefit uh, from the communist takeover up to a point. I mean, so it looked. And, uh, and she, in the story so far, she actually landed a kind of dream job. You know, she came from a totally dysfunctional family you know, she was abused by her father, although we don't make much of it. And um, um, and she is um, uh, and she got this dream job in this folk ensemble. You know, it's a kind of like you couldn't aspire to anything higher. You know, in that situation. That, that's the, the level uh, of hope for her. And um, and it's it's her home. And also, she's valued. You know, she sings, dances. She's a bit of a star in that little group. And it's a kind of group where she's part of a collective. And what he offers is, the, is an abstraction. It's some foreign country. She's never been abroad. She doesn't speak languages. She knows she will be just an appendage to him. And he knows about men. You know, she knows enough about life to know that men can't be trusted 100% as much as you love them, you know, and are, for, and are head over heels in love. So it's a it's a much more like an like an instinctive pro protective reaction than being a patriotic Polish woman. Yeah. So and she's kind of right. I mean, her instincts not to go to the West with him were turn out to be correct. You know, in, in in the end. But but then once it happens, when she doesn't go, it leaves a huge hole in her soul. You know, it's the thing. You know, that was the guy, and uh, you know. I chose the other path, but actually I can't, I'm not happy. I can't live without it. Yeah, we can see that. We can, we can really see that on images. And uh, the movie is very symbolic. That's why I chose to work on this uh, for the cinema therapy. And I, I have to admit that I've been working on cinema therapy sessions using clips from your movie. Uh, good. And it went pretty well for a lot of our patients. <laughs> yeah, good, good. So yeah, let's, but, let's but you chose very emotional scenes, which is good, I suppose. Exactly, you know, that, exactly. That's really my favorite scene. I remember shooting this scene, I had literally tears in my eyes, you know, like actually filming it, which doesn't happen much, but I, I totally failed. You use, you use that ratio three, four with black and white. Yeah. That makes me think, it, it reminds me a little bit of a Casablanca movie. Yeah. But it's it's cool. more sentimental to me. Yeah, they, 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 they film. I didn't think of Casablanca, but I definitely... I know you didn't, it's obvious. Uh, I'm just uh, saying that it might remind I, something. Although I do like Casablanca. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's see the next clip. Yeah. Je pas d'argent pour le but. J'étais avec la femme de ma vie. Formidable. Bon, ben laisse-moi dormir alors. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, that's hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. you, you can understand for the why I choose that part. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's another woman in his life. It's a hard confession, but it's true. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's a kind of cynical air about the relationship, no? I mean, there's two things. One thing is that she's, you know, French, and this is Paris, and relations are very different. You know, people have affairs, and it's like, it's a little bit less um, all or nothing, let's say. 
uh, in France, but, but also she is not the woman of his life, so to speak, uh, not the man of her life, you know. What's more, they live together, you know, and Victor and, and Zula never actually lived together. So it's something you don't think about, you know. Actually, more imaginary woman than a real woman, isn't she? Like, well, they kind of like, um, yeah, they're very intense. They met, they had an affair, and they kind of felt very passionate about each other, but they never actually lived a kind of prosaic life in an apartment. You know? so, so there's many things. Uh, and then she asks, you know, a really kind of cynical question, which is obviously he hadn't gone to the horse, but she's just like saying, I know, what do I care? Um, yeah, so it's, a, it's an, a bit of an empty relationship by the look of it. So we have a relationship she's, without... Plus she's French and she's dark haired and she's intellectual. So she's the very opposite exactly. of... Exactly, it's, it's of exactly Zula. the opposite what she wants. Yeah. So that explains a lot in cinema therapy. Yeah. Okay. We want other things, we do other things, we say other things, we express other things, and we mean yeah. totally different things than what we do. Yeah. So okay. we've been there and passed that, all of us, deep inside, I think. Yeah. Let's see next clip. We have a summary at the end, which is going to like, I think. Well, the, this situation is like that. We have the double S, silence, and then the C with celebration. Mm -hmm. We see no words, we hear no music, and then we see the celebration between Zula and Victor. Mm -hmm. I need your comment on that. No, it's... Um... You know, there's a situation. I mean, most of these things, you know, when you, when you write or invent scenes, you know, it always comes from your well, imagination, but also from your knowledge of life, you know, and, and I just remember these moments where, you know, where you meet somebody after a long time and, and, and it's, always, it's kind of awkward to speak and it's much nicer to be silent and just feel like a one person um, and just to take in the world, you know, as like a, as a, as one, as one person. You know? um, because all conversation would be really cheesy and kind of, uh, probably they already said all the cheesy stuff before. Uh, and that's kind of a magical moment where you don't have to speak, you know, where you are together enough not to have to make any kind of effort and speak and, and pretend and communicate. Mm -hmm. So they communicate without using any words, actually. They don't have a conversation, they dance, which is no, a kind of conversation. No, they're talking about first on the boat, you know, where they just take in this weird oh, city, the silence you know, which, which is them. like, you just kind of take it in, you know, and you hear some voices from the background. But, and then with the dancing, it's, yeah, it's the other side of it. We just kind of just feel your physically your presence, you know, without necessarily making love. Uh, and and again, it's it's more about kind of holding each other. You know, one is falling over, the other one's holding the, her up. So yes, it's all about kind of being happy, you know, uh, and not needing to say anything or uh, put words as a distancing <laughs> device or, or something that becomes a distance between you. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's see. Next clip, I think it's number five, if I'm not wrong.
מטאפור, אינטיוטקה. ופלנד. טרודנו. Zula się nie przejmuj. Będzie jak ma być. Kocham go już. Zula! W porządku wszystko? Women! Always talking to themselves. <laughs> They can't the stop talking. In movies, yeah. No, uh... Do you talk to yourself? Yes, I do. I do have a conversation with myself very often, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I use this part because I'm going to start with a comment and then you can, uh, you can sure. have your own, yeah, you can have your own comment on that. Well, we see the different aspects from uh, Victor to Zula. Zula is talking to herself in the bathroom, drinking alcohol, and she's actually having a conversation with herself. Mm -hmm. And the conversation she's having with herself is very disappointed for her. Mm -hmm. There are many limitations, but most of all, she feels like disappointed so far. We're not going to talk about the end, which is very happy and everything. Sad, mm -hmm. but happy mm -hmm. with, uh, with a, a lot of elements of the catharsis, which I really like. And that's why I adore this end you gave to this movie. But we can see for the first time in the movie that she's totally different from Victor. Mm -hmm. Her way of thinking by having a conversation with herself. And if Victor is very intro, he can't express himself that easily like she does, even though she's talking to herself. She might look like crazy, but she's not. Yeah. And this one of my best times, one of my best parts in the movies. And I really, really like it so much. This is something that I identify myself on that. And I've mm -hmm. heard that a lot of my patients are doing exactly the same thing when they have a dilemma to solve, mm -hmm. or they're having some second thoughts about something mm -hmm. or a decision, or they need to choose this or that. Mm -hmm. And she did it very well. Mm -hmm. And it's the first time in the movie that I've seen that she's intelligent. Mm -hmm. I, I like that kind of conversation she's having mm -hmm. with herself. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, But it's a funny conversation because she actually means the opposite of what she says. <laughs> I mean, in the end, you know, she talks herself into saying, oh, but he's great, I love him, you know. Like, <laughs> and uh, and uh, she's like exactly. talking herself out she's of it. She's criticizing her. herself. That, that's what she do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's trying to convince himself. But when he knocks on the door, he, her face goes <laughs> like, oh, it's him. <laughs> all right. Like nothing, nothing happened. It's all good, uh, huh? Oh, well, yeah, but no, but also she's just like, well, he's kind of irritating her. I think that the situation is that he, I mean, the context is that he's in Paris, he's been there for a while, he speaks French, he has friends, he has, also he has to kind of carry the social game, you know, whereas she is like, a, you know, somebody's been dragged into it and she's just kind of like, tries a bit to, con, you know, to cope, but actually inside, she thinks, oh, what, what am I doing? Or she feels, what am I doing here? It's, I feel alien, I have no idea. And then this man who in Poland, looked like a bloody genius and he was such a tough guy and he was so brave he stood up to the to the authorities and escaped and you know and here he looks like a like he's sucking up you know like he's like really trying too hard he's not this kind of guy that i fantasized all these years about him you know when he was away so there's all sorts of things you know it's the context that gives power to scenes usually you know and the scenes don't have to do too much work just the kind of necessary minimum. Um, so yeah, so here she's trying to talk herself back into, okay, I love him, I'm here. It's not for nothing that I'm in Paris. It makes sense. Let's keep going. Yeah. And that's exactly how it looks on, on the movie as well. So let's see clip number six, I think. Right, let's see and let's talk about it. Mm -hmm.
Mm. Two different ways of expression. Yeah. Introverts. Yeah. Victor. The music, yeah. I really like this one. Yeah. It was a kind of crazy idea, you know, which I didn't think would work in the film when I, when I wrote it, that, that he does this improvisation where coming out of a kind of cool jazz improvisation, he oh, that, just that loses was it. improvisation on the movie. Totally. Yeah. Well, you were shooting the movie that was improvisation. No, 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 no. The, the idea that in the film they're improvising because it's jazz, you know, so it's his solo. And then he goes off the rails. So, uh, and then he, I mean, all the, all the different motifs that are thrown in as he goes off the beat of the rails, they're tunes from the film, you know, like the, the, the main song. And then the international is there. And then, you know, it's like three different motifs come on, you know, the international, which they sang, you know, way back in Poland during the communist oath thing. So suddenly it's like Helter Skelter, all of that is there. Um, and I had, this, I had this great guy who was my, he helped me with the jazz arrangements, you know, he, Masetsky, he's a very, very talented guy. So he helped me to transform the folk music into, into, into jazz. And I asked him to just sit down at the piano and, uh, and just start this improvisation and go into all the motifs that we've had in a film and just don't worry how it comes out, you know? And then he sat and did this absolutely brilliant improvisation which then we had to learn how to how to replay properly you know, for his with his fingers and get Tomas Scott the actor to actually go with it, you know. So, but as you said, yeah, he's a guy who who expresses his uh, emotions through music, and uh, and again, this is like a, a scene which where he reacts to something that happened too late, you know. So, so this is usual esprit de l'escalier. You know, oh, well, the performances, uh, I really have to say that the performances are actually excellent, especially the main actress. She's very beautiful. She's intelligent, yeah. as you say, she's charming. And they actually, they are really singing in the movie. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that leaves us all breathless. Yeah, yeah no, 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 but it was work, you know. I mean, we worked on it for a long time because Joanna sings well. But we had to work on the jazz thing, you know, to get the smoky low voice and then the white singing, you know, at the beginning of the film is a kind of mountain type of singing, which, you know, there's a lot of work went into it to get the singing and the dancing. You know. And and Tomas didn't have to, he, Tomas actually learned to play the piano, but he couldn't have played to this level, you know, that was, that was a little bit, uh, yeah, of an editing trick, but um, yeah, yeah, but he got, but he learned the body language and the, you know, how it all works. In, in your body and mind. Well, another interesting uh, about this uh, movie I chose today is that describes the backdrop of Cold War and it's it has constantly that uh, it's really, the contrast is quite big within them, mm -hmm. with the movie, with the thoughts and with uh, that love story that we've seen, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, uh, Tell me something about the music. You have many different types of music in this movie. Is like the, with the third character in the film, you know, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a film, you know, I've been writing, trying to write this kind of, this story basically. It's inspired by my parents' uh, uh, relationship, which was even more crazy and tempestuous and involved more divorces and <laughs> moving countries. Uh, but it was, when I came, when I came, uh, but I decided that to make them both musicians. Uh, then that I realized, okay, the music is the one thing that they have in common that defines the different phases of the relationship. You know, like my parents stayed together through the critical times because they had me. You know, like the only child. Uh, whereas they uh, they have the music, and so so I kind of established. I used the the idea of this folk ensemble in early, in the late 40s, um, you know, the folk music. Yeah, the communist, exactly. the communist, that's, the that's communist exactly regime decided that that's the music that expresses the, the people as opposed to jazz and decadent 12-tone music or whatever. 
So, so, so you start with these kind of with, with a, you know, two two characters collecting folk music. As happened at the time, you know, people did go around the country and and collected collected how folk people folk uh, in the country sang. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then they turn it into a kind of folk ensemble. And then the, the government, the Ministry of Culture, decides to make it like official folk music, which instead of folklore becomes kind of fake lore a bit, but kind of fantastic anyway and then of course you know Victor actually is he's much more interested in jazz and, and other stuff you know so as soon as he gets to the west that's exactly where he goes but he uses where well, he goes musically but he uses uh, this, the motifs from the early part of the film you know like there's three different motifs that crop up throughout the whole film first they're sung by these folk performers yeah you know, the, the woman with the accordion the little girl they're really musicians, are they? Uh, they're folk musicians, which I like, you know, we looked for them for a long time. Um, and the, the girl was a kind of, yeah, she, she was not exactly a musician, but she sang at some folk festival. Uh, and then and that becomes like a kind of symphonic folk music uh, organized by, by a conductor, by Victor. And then that becomes jazz. And then we have some rock and roll and, you know, rock around the clock and and Polish pop music of the 60s. So music kind of all the time comments on where they are in their relationship and where, where the world is as well. So when, uh, you know, when you hear rock around the clock, you know, cut through, you know, it really, it's a real marker, you know, like Victor is still in this kind of cool jazz, kind of smoky environment and she responds to rock and roll, you know, that's when she wakes up in the bar. I mean, it's, it's another scene which I thought you might show, but, uh, but that kind of that defines the split in the relationship very we well. We have yeah. another part of this movie. <laughs> yeah. You still have one more? No, I don't yeah. have any. But I really want to ask you something. Today we're here to see the therapeutic uh, cinema in the land of uh, expressing ourselves. And I want to ask you, do you believe in cinema as a therapeutic tool? I never thought about it in these terms. So I, I can't say I believe in it. I, I know there's some films that have um, had an impact on me and kind of formed me or deformed me or, or gave me something that I was yearning for, you know, throughout my life, you know, there's always some film. I suppose Casablanca probably was one of them at some point, you know, as well. But, but it was, you know, even Taxi Driver when I was a teenager, I uh -huh. saw that and it really kind of like got to me. It wasn't a healthy, <laughs> no, but it, it, uh, but it has a lot to say that, about you, know, you. There's a lot of films you kind of watch and appreciate the form and, you know, uh, how it's done and, and, and even, well, you get it, but some films just hit you in the solar plexus, no? So that's, and, and thank God for those films. So I don't know whether it's, uh, you could call it a therapy, but, but for sure, for sure, you know, they have an impact. But also I've noticed the, the films that, I made, uh, some of them I really made with a lot of um, baggage, you know, like emotional baggage. And these are the films that seem to work, you know, that seem to work on others. I made some films which I kind of made more, okay, let's, how do you make a, you know, this kind of film? Whereas a certain stories or ca and characters or relationships I carry with me like a hump, you know, and, uh, and sooner or later, I know I'll make a film of this, although usually they're the most difficult films to make. They're kind of difficult, not just emotionally, but like technically, very difficult to get to tell as a story. Uh, and Cold War, it took me like 10 years, not, not literally 10 years to, to make, but I was just like trying this way, that way, how do I do it? It seemed impossible. Plus the love story I was going to tell lasted 40 years, you know, so that kind of, that became very difficult in terms of aging of the actors and stuff. But, uh, but I know that every time I had a, like a film when I felt I'm really inside it, I'm really like, this is about, uh, this is about something I, I kind of know in some weird non-intellectual way. Uh, I know that I always felt that these films carry me, you know, that they are, they are they're the ones that are, in the end I get to make them somehow. And, uh, and, uh, and by experience, I know that they're the films that people respond to most, you know, so. And that involves, you know, like some documentary I made a long time ago, you know, I mean, whenever you put some kind of emotion and love into it, it comes back. Yeah. So we do have globally uh, a, 
and that, that uh, we have a list for cinema therapy movies mm -hmm. and your movie is in this list, <laughs> in the global, mm -hmm. global cinema therapy movie list, which Very is something really wonderful, I guess. And uh, we have different type of movies for different type of mental uh, issues, not illnesses, just issues, as I used to say. So if you can uh, put in a category Cold War, mm -hmm. um, do you think of any kind of list that you can put it on? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought in these terms, so I can't. Of course you can. I'm yeah. just saying. Okay, so Pavel, so uh, I really want to thank you for being here with us today. Yes. yes. And it's been very, very, uh, I'm, I'm so happy to see you again, even though I'm seeing you from a screen, but it's on live time. So it's like we're having a conversation and the people here from the next room are, are looking at you right now. And, I guess they're happy to hear you and see you. Thank you so much for your comments on these clips I choose for cinema therapy session. And uh, I'm gonna move to the next room to see if they have any questions or comments about these clips okay. and about your movies. So and then people next room, hello and goodbye. <laughs> well, thank you for, if you're there, if you're really there. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna see them all now. I'm gonna see Very them good. all now. So all right, thank then. you so much for being here and doing this from my, with me. Very good. I really appreciate it. It was a pleasure. Thank you very okay. much. Bye-bye.